Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very excited to have with us Mark Becker. Mark completed his Bachelor and Master of Science degrees at the University of Münster, doing his master's thesis with Professor Ryan Gilmore in 2016, working in the field of biomimetic photocatalysis. Since then, Mark has been working on his PhD in the group of Professor Corinna Schindler at the University of Michigan, investigating Lewis acid and energy transfer catalysis. Currently, he's a fifth-year graduate student, and he'll be finishing up next year. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Mark. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm very happy to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me to this research spotlight, and I'm very excited to talk about this recent story about the development of an intermolecular tuber suicide addition reaction for the synthesis of azadidines. It is probably fair to say that tuber suicide addition reactions represent one of the most efficient ways to synthesize formamide drinks. And these reactions typically proceed through photochemical excitation of one of the two reaction components. From here, this intermediate can undergo the side addition reaction with the alkene, either directly from the singlet state or after intersystem crossing from the more long-lived triplet state. This scheme also illustrates one of the advantages of doing this reaction photochemically, since once in the excited state, the remaining energy pathway is always energetically downhill, so we can easily overcome the challenges that ground state chemistry poses for accessing these small strained rings. While there has certainly been a tremendous amount of work for the synthesis of butanes and oxetanes using this approach, there really only exists very limited examples for the synthesis of azadidines via a corresponding azapatenebihi reaction. And this was really surprising to us as azadidines have really found increased use as building blocks in discovery chemistry in recent years. And since they often display highly desirable characteristics and can be used as a bioisister for the corresponding large nitrogen heterocycles, which further motivated us to pursue research in this area. Yet the synthesis of these scaffolds using photocytal addition reactions um, remained um, highly underdeveloped, and in fact, there really only exists a very small number of imines that is known to participate in tuber suicide addition reactions. And in most cases, these really only react with this very specific type of alkene. These compounds always require UV light to achieve excitation, uh, which further limits the functional group tolerance of these compounds. In addition, the amine is typically tethered within these structures, and it has yet not been demonstrated that the resulting cellular adducts can be used, in fact, to access the unprotected free version of these azadidine compounds. We recently published our first work in this area, in which we access azadidines through an intramolecular tuber suicide addition reaction. In contrast to previous work, this work relies on an iridium photocatalyst that catalyzes the reaction between an activated alkene such as a styrene and an oxime under visible irradiation using triplet energy transfer catalysis. And the way this reaction works is that excitation of the photocatalyst ultimately allows population of the triplet excited state. The triplet state energy of the catalyst matches really nicely that of the substrate, specifically the styrene component. Uh, which allows for triplet energy transfer to occur. In other words, during this process, the triplet excited state is transferred from the catalyst onto the substrate, and specifically, again, the alkene moiety here. The triplet styrene can then undergo a step by step addition process with the oxime, which ultimately gives the desired azadidine product and returns the ground state catalyst, which can then re engage in the catalytic cycle. While well, this protocol could be carried out under very mild conditions with visible light, which really enabled a broad substrate scope and high functional group tolerance, and also for the first time gave access to uh, these unprotected azadidines through anode bond cleavage under reductive conditions, as shown on the bottom right-hand side of the slide, we're not quite happy that we needed to use activated alkenes with low enough uh, triplet energy, specifically um, styrenes in this case. And at the same time, th this approach was unfortunately limited to the intramolecular cellular addition reaction. And the reason for that is that the triplet styrene preferentially undergoes isomerization instead of um, engaging in the desired intermolecular um, cellular addition process. However, when we tried to react beta methylstyrene with this aromatic oxime, we didn't only see styrene isomerization, but also isomerization of the oxime component, indicating that energy transfer to the oxime occurs um, as well. Looking to the literature, this seemed to be viable as the triple energy and reactivity of oxymes has been previously explored to achieve isomerization reactions as well as anode bond homolysis. 
However, we were surprised to see that triple oxymes have not yet been explored to achieve two plus two side addition reactions, which led us to start our investigations within this area, especially since there's been some recent work by the Glorious and Rovis lab, which suggested that at least some oxymes, particularly those with aromatic substituents, have accessible triplet energies. We started out by identifying an oxime that would be suitable to engage in an intermolecular side addition reaction, and we envisioned that the use of a cyclic oxime would avoid competing isomerization. While the oxime I'm substituting would likely allow us to tune the triplet energy of the substrate, but also its reactivity to engage in an intermolecular um, side addition process with an alkene to access the desired azadidine. And since we're not sensitizing the alkene component in this reaction, we should be in principle able to use completely unactivated alkenes in this case. To probe whether a substrate can actually be activated through energy transfer from the photocatalyst, especially when the triplet energy is not known, we measured the luminescence quenching for each substrate, which allows us to uh, guide our substrate evaluation based on the quenching ability of each substrate. For example, aliphatic oxymes are poor substrates for this reaction, as they do not strongly interact with the catalyst, likely because their triplet energy is just too high. In contrast, aromatic oxymes were found to be strong quenches of the photocatalyst. However, surprisingly, we did not observe any azadity formations with these substrates. And this was the case for really a series of different aromatic oxymes as well as hydrazones. This indicated to us that aromatic substituents are likely good to lower the triplet energy of these oxymes, but they do not provide the desired reactivity, which led us then to investigate other functional groups as well. Ultimately, we then tested these glyoxylate-derived cyclic oxymes, which contain an ester moiety instead of an aromatic substituent. The photochemistry of these compounds has previously not been investigated, but it seemed that the conjugating group maintains good quenching ability. But for the first time, which was really exciting to us, it also gave us the, um, the, the desired reactivity, in this case in 60% yield with one hexene as the alkene component. The yields could be greatly improved by using this iridium photocatalyst shown here on the right hand side of the slide, uh, which has a similarly high triplet energy of around 60 kcats per mole. And as you can see, we can really incorporate various functional groups into the backbone of the oxime substrate in high yields, while changes to the ester moiety were also generally well tolerated. Amides or carboxylic acids instead of the ester moiety unfortunately do not work um, very well, but the successful cellular addition reaction with a nitrile containing substrate on the bottom right hand side of the slide um, indicates that other functional groups um, other than esters can also be employed. It is important to highlight that these reactions proceed in excellent reaches selectivity and overall good diastereomer selectivity, um, generally favoring the exodiastereomer, which the alkene substituent is pointing away from the backbone of the substrate. In terms of the alkene scope of this reaction, uh, we were excited to see how broadly tolerated unactivated alkenes were in this transformation. And we can use feedstock reagents such as ethylene gas, but really primary all the way up to fully substituted quaternary alkenes containing various sensitive or pharmaceutically relevant functional groups. I would suggest to pause the video at this point if you would want to take a closer look at these compounds. Given the interest in azetidine spiral cycles and discovery chemistry programs, we are also excited to see that and we can readily access these scaffolds by reacting exocyclic alkenes in this reaction. In this way, we can incorporate another azadidine ring as well as other and various um, sulfur, oxygen, or nitrogen containing heterocycles. Finally, we also tested functionalized alkenes and we're happy to see that alkenes with both electron donating or withdrawing substituents are tolerated, such as vinyl ethers or acrylates. Similarly, this allows us to incorporate functional handles directly at the azadidine ring, such as silanes, boronic esters, or trifluor methyl groups, which could then be used for further um, functionalization. So this 2 plus 2 addition reaction seemed to be quite general in scope, yet we started to demonstrate that these products could be um, deprotected via cleavage of the anode bond. This is commonly achieved through the use of some single electron reductants, such as um, some myrom iodide or zinc metal. However, under these conditions, uh, we instead observed this intriguing oxazazepam product, which um, we think arises from a selective cleavage of the internal CM bond, likely through uh, this uh, alpha coxy radical shown here at the bottom of the slide. Similarly, zinc metal under acidic conditions not only reduce the internal CN bond, but also the NO bond, which results in the formation of this uh, gamma lactam in 58% yield. We were able to find conditions to achieve the desired selective cleavage of the NO bond, and in this case, relying on a palladium mediated hydrogenolysis reaction. 
And under these conditions, this dimethyl substitute is added in here smoothly and it goes anobon cleavage, uh, followed by lactonization to give rise to the spirocytic free gas editing product. In contrast, when we use the unsubstituted version of this compound, we instead isolated this uncyclized amino alcohol. We actually do observe the corresponding lactonized product at shorter reaction times, which is, however, ultimately hydrolyzed throughout the reaction. And these conditions are in fact unique in achieving the selective cleavage of the anode bond, which allowed for a series of different synthetic modifications of other parts of the molecule in excellent yields, as shown here with hydrolysis reduction, addition reactions, as well as amide synthesis, which were all not a problem. Having then demonstrated that this new protocol allows for the synthesis of a broad variety of different acetylene building blocks, we next wanted to elucidate the reactivity of these um, glyoxalate-derived cyclic oxymes. It turns out that harvesting the reactivity of these compounds can really only be achieved through the use of energy transfer catalysis, as direct excitation with UV light didn't provide any reactivity. Overall, not too surprising, a conjugating group adjacent to the oxime is required, likely um, to achieve um, triplet energy lowering, as well as a cyclic backbone as shown with this acyclic oxime that exclusively underwent easy isomerization instead of the cyclic addition reaction process. Next, the Sternworm quenching study revealed that the oxime is in fact the only species interacting with the catalyst in solution. We certainly also considered the quenching process via a single allergen transfer. However, the redox potential of these substrates are far out of range for the redox catalyst used in the study, which further confirmed our hypothesis that a triplet energy transfer mechanism is operative. We evaluated a series of different photocatalysts with a broad range of triplet energies and plotting the conversion against catalyst triplet energies shows really a sharp decrease in reaction efficiency with catalysts below 56 kcals per mole, which points us to a triplet energy of these oxime substrates of around 56 uh, to 60 kcals per mole. Next, and to further study the cellular addition process between the alkene and the oxime, we designed this intramolecular substrate. And we expected that this probe could elucidate whether any bioradical intermediates are involved in this reaction, as well as if the cell addition initially proceeds via a CC or a CN bond formation. Submitting the pure E or Z alkene isomer to the reaction conditions provided a similar mixture of exo and endo diastereomers, which indicated that bioradical intermediates are involved that lead to the observed scrambling. While these two substitute alkenes easily outcompete the intermolecular cell addition reaction, uh, the corresponding um, terminal alkene shown here uh, seemed substantially less reactive and gave a rather complex mixture of both intra and intermolecular cycloadducts, which suggested to us that the first step of the cycloaddition reaction is most likely uh, in fact the CC bond formation. In this case, the resulting c centered radical is stabilized by the adjacent um, alkene substituent, which explains the drastic difference in the reactivity between the substituted and unsubstituted alkene in these reactions. Combining all these mechanistic experiments, we propose that upon excitation of the photocatalyst with visible light, energy transfer to the cyclic oxime can occur. The oxime can then undergo a step by side addition process, and the intermediate of this process is this bioradical shown here that can either adopt a conformation in which the alkene residue is placed away from the cyclic backbone of the substrate or underneath it. The conformation on the right-hand side is favored as it avoids any steric interactions uh, with the substrate backbone, which is supported by the impact that substrate substitution um, in this position has onto the diastoselectivity of the cellular addition process. No substitution results in almost no preference uh, for either diastereomer, while sterically demanding and three-dimensional substituents increase the um, stereoselectivity substantially. This rather simple model has hold true to all substrates that we have tested so far in the study, which I think is really important to be able to accurately predict the stereochemical outcome of these reactions. Finally, after intersystem crossing, radical recombination occurs, which affords the desired azadidine with preference for the exodiastereomer. And with that, I would like to conclude, and I hope I could convince you that the energy transfer catalysis is a great platform to make complex substituted azadidine rings. I think this work highlights that there's still a lot of triplet state reactivity uh, that has yet to be discovered, as shown with these previously unexplored galoxylate derived oxymes, which really interacted with a, a rather broad scope of alkenes, which um, I think is rather unusual for triplet state third addition reactions. I would also like to invite you to read this behind the paper story that my co worker Emily um, Waring wrote, and you can find the link on the top right hand side of this slide. 
With that, I would like to thank um, all the people in my lab, especially my advisor, Professor Corina Schindler, as well as my coworkers, Alistair Richardson and Emily Waring, who worked with me on both the intra and the intermolecular ASA pattern and BQ reaction project. I would also like to acknowledge these institutions shown here for financial support and finally thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out to me via Twitter or LinkedIn in case you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in for another Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Mark for a very interesting talk. To support this initiative, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, or follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.